Uh, I'm Dean Takashi. I'm the lead writer for GameSpeed at VentureBeat. Uh, I'm based in San Francisco, and I've been writing about the game industry for more than 20 years. Uh, I run the GameSpeed conferences, and our next one is on October 5th and 6th in San Francisco. Uh, Uh, Vice President of Interactive at the Future Group, uh, which has uh, raised $20 million uh, plus to uh, make interactive mixed reality game shows that blend video games, uh, special effects, and television. Uh, so, uh, Ellen, uh, can you tell us more about your background? My mic is working either, but let's see, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, thank you for uh, having me. Uh, it's been a great conference so far. Um, so, I'm from Oslo in Norway, um, and I've been in the games industry for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, my background is from screenwriting, from film and television, mm -hmm. and um, I came in a bit sideways to work on Age of Conan, an MMO that was launched nine years ago mm -hmm. uh, from Funcom. Mm -hmm. And I started out as a voiceover director mm -hmm. for that game. and. Um, realized I loved making games. So I stayed and um, became associate producer, realized I loved producing and designing games as well. Um, mm -hmm. Also worked on The Secret World mm -hmm. and lived a few years in Germany where I worked on platforms, a Facebook game and two mobile games. Um, one was Angry Birds Epic, which was published by Rovio, and the other was Sacred Legends, which was published by Deep Silver Fish Labs. Mm -hmm. So then, a year and a half ago, um, I was contacted by this new startup in Norway, which was called The Future Group, and they were going to, to blend That's television and e-commerce and the games into one, one ecosystem, and I thought, this is this chance I can't pass up on this, so I packed my bags and moved, mm -hmm. moved back home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, the company's creating this uh, uh, game show, Lost in Time, and... Um, uh, the contestants are, are filmed doing challenges against a green screen in a TV studio. Uh, and the Future Group's technology uh, renders a, a virtual ara world around them live. Um, and, and so the viewer at home, uh, to the viewer at home, the contestants appear to be completely immersed in this uh, 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 castle or abandoned mine, uh, uh, a virtual environment. Uh, and then the contestants' interaction with the physical props uh, triggers, you know, this immediate reaction in the virtual world, uh, and the audience can play along as well. Uh, the same challenges on a on a mobile app, uh, where they can see how they would do this uh, in uh, in parallel with the contestants. Right? So, did I get that right? Yeah, more or less. I mean, <laughs> when I started at the Future Group, I was told that it normally takes people about three months. Uh, from when they start in the company to they actually realize what we do. So mm -hmm. it's always fun to try to wrap it up uh, uh -huh. in one paragraph. Uh -huh. okay. um, but yeah, more or less, we render real-time graphics uh, using the Unreal Engine um, with our technology on top so that the players are in a virtual environment and they can interact with it using physical props. Um, and they can partake in challenges. Um, and then, yeah, the players at home can do the same thing. So can we run the video to show the audience, uh, you know, what we mean here? Yeah, uh, that's going to be lost easier. <laughs> lost in time video. Yeah. With mixed reality, we merge real and virtual worlds. Physical and digital objects coexist in real time. Interactive mixed reality goes further. By using an app to connect the viewers at home into that mixed environment, so they can participate in gamified versions and share one unified experience.
That's good. Did you catch uh, Nolan Bushnell at the, the end of that video there? <laughs> so uh, uh, can you sort of explain that, uh, just uh, what was happening there and uh, uh, what result you also got uh, from Lost in Time? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, this video shows um, a different working day for game developers. Um, when you saw in the green screen studio there, uh, more or less the entire team was in there carrying props testing, sitting on the motion platform. Um, there were systems designers, game designers, back-end developers. Um, we were all in there developing games in a different way than we were used to because we are used to thinking about what's fun for the player or the user who sits with the device. Um, but designing this, we had to also think about that it's fun for a contestant in a game show to do. And it also has to be fun for people who are sitting at home, not participating, but watching it. So it was a, it was a different way of thinking. Um, my closest partner in crime was Matt Claxton, who was a, he's also a game producer, but uh, coming from the TV industry, that means something else. So he's been making game shows in England for 15 years. And so we would sit together and try to figure out what mechanics will work both on mobile and on TV while we were developing this. Um, and it was fun. I mean, um, you know, we were, we had for, the, for our driving games, we had a motion platform which we could control in strength um, and the props could be rigged. So we would, we were basically the, um, what do you say, the, the guinea pigs to figure out the fine line between fun and dangerous because mm -hmm. we wanted to trigger real emotions in the contestants. Mm -hmm. So, you know, most mm -hmm. of the time I would come home like bruised and beaten, but finding that right, mm -hmm. um, that right point where it's like, yes, now it, it gives you that mm -hmm. um, adventure park, theme park uh, tickle, and then, mm -hmm. but you're never really scared. So that was really fun to do. Um, and you did this in you know, sort of like this pilot in, in Norway, I guess, right? Yes, yeah. so, so the first season of Lost in Time just aired in Norway and we've used Norway as a soft launch market to see how does the technology work, what, how m are people participating, um, are people enjoying it, and um, it's been fun to see because we were estimating that maybe between 5 and 10 percent of the viewers would actually play along, mm. uh, and we ended up seeing, in the last show we had 45 percent interactivity and we because we saw it start at I think 20% and mm -hmm. then with each show more and more people would participate mm -hmm. um, because they they found out that that experience actually gave them mm -hmm. something extra mm -hmm. and um, the, the the games are designed with in a traditional free-to-play model except we didn't have any in-app purchases so mm -hmm. it's free to play mm -hmm. but with the meta features for ensuring retention so players would play throughout the week and earn virtual currency that they could sort of sink into the live broadcast to win real prices mm -hmm. and so we would have skill-based tournaments um, where you know the best player would win mm -hmm. um, but we would also at the beginning of each show the players at home would choose a team. So we'd separate Norway in two halves, mm -hmm. and that could be women and men, or under and over 25, or you know, um, in a relationship, single. And we'd separate them, and we'd calculate the average score of the players throughout the show. Mm -hmm. um, and then towards the end, we would take a random person from the winning team, and they would win the same amount of money as the winning contestant on the show. So it was obviously in everyone's interest that the contestant, the winner on the show, got as much money as possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, a lot more engagement, I guess, than uh, I think there, there have been a lot of historical sort of uh, interactive video experiments, I guess, that have happened. But yeah, uh, that's very high engagement, I guess, for uh, this kind of experiment, too. Uh, so what are the origins of this technology and, uh, and I guess the idea kind of came from Hollywood in the first place? Or yeah, yeah, so yeah. our founder, Bord Alnish Klassin, he, he worked at Warner Brothers. He was the technical director mm -hmm. um, for the Matrix movies mm -hmm. um, and he was in special effects. So they were, that's when they started using game engines for mm -hmm. to render special effects and he developed this technology mm -hmm. which allows this 
um, this real-time rendering. And mm -hmm. what's cool about it is that it's live capable, mm -hmm. but you could also use post-production mm -hmm. as uh, traditionally. So you sort of have the option on how you want to, to solve it. Mm -hmm. And there, there's some variety of uses for this technology, and um, you have another video here of uh, sort of a slightly different way of using the same technology, right? So, so can we show this uh, Street Fighter video? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Welcome back to the G Fuel E League Arena. We've been joined by a giant cat yeah. on the desk. He's pretty big. Look at their champions in the back of them. Bringing characters out into the real world, out of the game. It's something that we haven't been able to do before in real time with tracking. Now we've brought them out into the 3D environment. The movement of the cloth, the movement of the hair, uh, the jiggling bellies, the animations, the quality of the shaders, the, the look of the characters. That fluidity is shown in the real world now. We're able to put them into the real world and that looks like they're really there. It's giving them life. This is something that we've always hoped for, but have never been able to do until now. The technology that we're pumping out there, loving this production value at Ely. This project has been an amazing experience. It has opened the door to collaboration between Turner Studios, the Future Group, and Ross. We can push our real time graphics further than we have before. We're able to translate, move, rotate, position our characters anywhere on the stage at a moment's notice as the director is creating their show we can adapt to those requests. Clockwise, guys, we can walk around our stage and shoot AR graphics on a steady cam to see them from both a, a wide shot and a steady cam shot close up. You can stand next to your character, you can look at it, you can see the character up on the stage as the camera moves around it and look at the detail. Really brings the characters to life. I think when the fans have the opportunity to see them in three dimensions on stage in a real world setting, they're gonna love it. Street Fighter fans should go crazy over this. I think it's gonna blow their minds. I believe the fans are going to expect this type of treatment as a norm and want more and more of immersive visuals for esports broadcasts. It's just gonna keep getting better and better and I can't wait to see what happens next. So that was a Street Fighter uh, tournament, uh, esports uh, broadcast, I guess. And uh, can you can you tell us more about you know what went into this? Yeah, well? this was a collaboration we did with Turner. I think it's now a month ago. Mm -hmm. um, it was aired on TBS in the States, um, and this showcases the sort of the second use of our our technology. So this mm -hmm. is our um, sort of third party product, which mm -hmm. we call Frontier, which is a graphics rendering platform mm -hmm. um, which allows for the real-time rendering of these of these graphics live um, and that lets that lets um, the cameraman um, to see he can see the AR characters when he's filming so he can act on their movements mm -hmm. directly uh, the same can the director so he mm -hmm. will see in his monitors in a way to edit um, the best shots possible. Um, so that's happening real time, uh, whereas I think more people might be just familiar with seeing these kinds of characters inserted uh, in post-production, I guess, in uh, a, a video that's not live, right? Yes. So, so why is it more important to be able to do this in real time or to do it live, I guess? Um, well, it allows for more interaction with the characters and it's the same uh, that you see in Lost in Time as well that if I touch a physical prop mm -hmm. it live it will immediately blow something up in the virtual world mm -hmm. um, and so if we if we were filmed now mm -hmm. using Frontier mm -hmm. you could have a little guy you know mm -hmm. massaging <laughs> your head and and mm -hmm. and everyone here would be able to see it on the screen mm -hmm. and so it allows for for a very nice and immersive experience mm -hmm. in terms of AR. Mm -hmm. And then I guess it, 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 it winds up saving money as well on post-production as well, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not gonna, ask, uh, we're not gonna <laughs> say that to the CG guys uh, back <laughs> in the office, but um, definitely. So it, that also depends on the, the quality you wanna have. So the more you prepare in advance when you film it, you can have it ready. And then mm -hmm. you can also do post-production in terms of mm -hmm. inserting shots, but you record all the data live so so it is live capable mm -hmm. 
but uh, just besides saving money, though, it's, it's just good for the viewing audience, right? It's uh, a new experience. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and, and especially for, for the type of show that we made now, that was sort of a showcase for our technology, mm -hmm. because we want to sell, f if we're selling Frontier as a, as a third party for production companies, broadcasters who want to make these kinds of productions themselves, but we also develop content like Lost in Time to see, look at what our technology can do mm -hmm. to, you know, see and, and then sell those formats on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I guess this is sort of more than just you guys doing this in, in the industry. Um, I saw at the, the Game Developers Conference in March, uh, Epic Games also showed the Unreal Engine being used to render uh, a race car live. Uh, and I think they did this experiment with the mill, yep. right? Uh, no, yeah. absolutely, it was the mill, um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and I think that's really, because we also were partners with Epic, and mm -hmm. um, I think it's really cool what they're doing. They're mm -hmm. saying that we have a, it's a game engine, but they also want to take it to to other outlets and see other verticals where mm -hmm. it can be used, and I think that's mm -hmm. fantastic, and I think more, more, peop more and more people will mm -hmm. get on that bandwagon to see, because it's so powerful, and it lets you do things that, mm -hmm. that you can't do in any other any other way, in yeah. a sense, yeah. In that case, I, I think they would film a, a car that just sort of had a blank QR code on top of it uh, as its paint job, and they would drive this car around and film it, uh, and then they would uh, use the game engine to just inject uh, the, the shell of some other virtual car onto that car so the audience could see, you know, a race car there, uh, from one second it'd be a yellow car, or the director didn't like that color, then he would change it to a red car, and just on the fly they would uh, be able to uh, manipulate the, the car as they're filming it. Uh, that was cool. Yeah, so uh, no, and they yeah. had a rice car on stage, that was very <laughs> nice. Yeah. But I think that's, that's, also, that's also where we're going, right? Mm -hmm. With everything being customizable uh, for the user and for the viewer. So mm -hmm. I imagine in not too long you'll be, it's not just the director who can change the color on the fly, but you can probably, if you're watching it, you can say, I don't like that car mm -hmm. in this commercial, I don't like the color, I want to see it in another color. And, and mm -hmm. using these kinds of technologies, you'll be able to, to do just that. Mm -hmm. So I guess this is what people call mixed reality, right? And uh, uh, where, do, where do you think this is going then? <laughs> uh, we have the technology here, it's here available today, it works pretty well. Um, wh what uses do you see for this mixed reality? Yeah. Well, I mean, and then we call it even interactive mixed reality because mm -hmm. we also let users who are not in the studio participate. So with our, the fact that you can be in the same challenge at the same time adds the interactive element to it. Mm -hmm. um, no, I think I think we're only at the beginning of it, and I'm mm -hmm. very curious mm -hmm. to see mm -hmm. where it will end. And I think that's based on everyone who makes games and who makes content, uh, mm -hmm. because it's just a huge mm -hmm. toolbox of new things that we can uh, that we can do. And I think it also um, allows for a lot of possibilities, both in movies and in television, to to do things that used to be very, very expensive and mm -hmm. almost impossible to do. And now if you can do them virtually, mm -hmm. then then you might get a completely different product than if you had to, you know, sort of scale back, scale back, scale back to do something you could build in a studio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I guess game shows on TV, they, they can be really boring and uh, I guess the audience is aging for, for them. Uh, uh, this is, I guess you guys see this as the new way to pump new life into it and get to younger audiences as well. Absolutely, and that was, um, mm -hmm. well, not just game shows. I think mm -hmm. uh, the audience in general who are watching linear television, mm -hmm. is the, they, the average age is going up, and that was mm -hmm. what our um, TV Norge, the TV channel who broadcast our show in Norway, that was their wish to get younger, or more younger audience back to watch television, so to mm -hmm. appeal with, with the games. And we saw that, that our main audience were, were between 25 and 35, so you'd got that younger audience back to actually mm -hmm. watch television, which was pretty cool. And you, you will also have it um, mm -hmm. the other way, that you will have people who traditionally only watch mm -hmm. television and won't pick up a game. They will actually start playing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you, and we would see that in the demographics. Uh, I, was, I was obviously quite happy to see that the gender split was more or less 50-50 mm -hmm. uh, of our users, and it was spread across 
you know, the whole, the whole family. And we even had like a small chunk of people over mm. 65 mm. who would also play a lot. Mm -hmm. So that was fun to see. So a as this goes wide, you know, around the world, uh, what are some things you might uh, expect as far as how it gets used? Like, I can see in, in the United States that the American nin ninja shows <laughs> could uh, benefit from something like this. Uh, uh, Absolutely, uh, and also more traditional shows. Like, mm. we were in talks with, with several broadcasters from all over the world who are saying, can, what can you do for our mm -hmm. show? And these are shows that may have been on television for many, many years mm -hmm. and who sort of want to revitalize uh, who want to see what it's possible to do both both in terms of obviously the virtual studio production mm -hmm. but also in terms of what can the players at home do because I mean the numbers are clear right I think it's 80% of people who use a second screen if they actually watch television uh, or a film and and what I think is interesting with interactive mixed reality is that you have this reunification of concentration mm -hmm. where you actually have the same product on your first and on your second screen and mm. what that does to your to the experience is quite powerful um, mm. for someone who like us who who create content mm. so it's it's bringing together this sort of physical and the digital uh, together in yet a, a new way yeah mm. and I think mm. um, it's funny to see because the contestants you didn't see so much of them a little bit but mm. but they're doing everything in a green room uh, and, you know, the biggest challenge we had is, will we get that mm -hmm. f proper emotions? Mm -hmm. Will we get the real reactions that we want? Because they're not actors, they're, mm -hmm. they're real people. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they see exactly what they have, have mm -hmm. to see. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was obvious within, you know, a few minutes of testing that definitely you will laugh and you will, you know, scream and you will get excited because you are drawn into it. Um, in a way which is, uh, whenever people come to our studio to test the games, they'll be like, oh no, I get it. It's really fun and it's exhausting. And you wanted, if, the, if you're pulling a rope, we want it to be heavy. People will come out of that challenge. They'd be sweating mm -hmm. and they'd be breathing heavily. And, it, and, and mm -hmm. that's what comes across when you also have the virtual uh, background. It looks like, it mm -hmm. actually looks like it fits. Mm -hmm. So you might use this for something like the European Song Contest? I guess. For example, <laughs> you could also use, yeah, you mm. could use Frontier for, l for huge live events. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that's a good example because that's, you know, here in Spain as well, like uh, it's, it's expensive uh, mm. to, for example, broadcast the, to win the Eurovision Song Contest and then you have to host it. Mm -hmm. And I think if you could use something like Frontier, maybe you could, you could do it in a more mm. reasonable way and still have something that looks incredible mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, I guess you've, you've had connections to Hollywood now because of this technology then and I guess the origins of the technology came from Hollywood so do, do you do you feel like um, uh, you know you've been able to communicate this to them and uh, and get a good reaction so far as to yeah, to how they can use it or absolutely and mm -hmm. I think from from the very beginning we're also on funding rounds people were very interested but then mm -hmm. um, we had a meeting at Disney and they mm -hmm. were saying oh but we've been wanting to do this something like this for years but every time we tried we got a headache and then we gave up mm -hmm. uh, and so I think a lot of them been sort of on the fence to see can they actually do it mm -hmm. and so we see now that lost in time is out we said people now they're you know, coming back and very interested in, in, in actually trying it out mm -hmm. because it's, um, it's complicated, but it's um, very cool when you actually mm -hmm. work with it and see how it, how it plays out. So it's invigorating in a lot of ways. Is it, is it, is it frustrating in some ways in that, you know, there, there's some things you can't quite do yet, I guess, or things you'd like to do? But mm, <laughs> I, well, no, I think, th I think we're, if I w I'm going to pull out some frustrating elements, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's the fact that we're in one company, we're seven different industries working together, mm -hmm. um, coming with our expertise and our ways of doing things, mm -hmm. our language, our processes, and mm -hmm. we're trying to work together. So just putting the mm -hmm. TV industry and the games mm -hmm. industry together mm -hmm was a very interesting exercise and we came out of it learning a lot but I think that was the most mm -hmm. most um, well, that's where we had the most 
friction mm -hmm. because you know ga game developers they will sit in a room with their headsets they'll be quiet and they'll be on their keyboards and they'll be talking if they're talked it's on slack mm -hmm. and um, you know when there's a meeting we'll We'll have written everything beforehand. We'll come in, we'll present it, and then it's done, and we go out. And and in television, it's much more extrovert. They'll you know talk to each other, go over and discuss, and come into a meeting, mm -hmm. and that's where you decide thing. That's when you that's where you brainstorm, and it's yeah. a whole different way. But it's also cool. So I think that's another mm -hmm. area where we've been innovative. Yeah. I think it's in establishing a way of mm -hmm. of this kind of collaboration, also with the mm -hmm. special effects industry. Yeah, it seems like there's some natural um, challenges to th that exist when you combine these two industries, like uh, you know, film and TV uh, do so much pre-production and they try to render it once, I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> Pix Pixar doesn't like to render things 30 times, right? They, rent, they like to render their final movie once and don't change it, whereas the game developers um, prototype all the time and yep. they, they keep changing the game continuously. Right, yeah. so uh, it seems like um, it might be hard to get along. Uh, for we we had our moments, but <laughs> I think it's but but you learn it, right? Because if you mm -hmm. don't know, then mm -hmm. then you don't know what can be frustrating for someone else. So so the our CG artists could be working and working and working, and it's more mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. for them, it's more like a painting. They can keep mm -hmm. working on it, and nothing breaks. But now they had to learn that oh, but if I change something, if I move something around, mm -hmm. maybe it breaks something else mm -hmm. in the other end of the pipeline. And that was also something that sort of learning by doing, I guess mm -hmm. you can say. Mm -hmm. So w what, do what have you guys said about your roadmap so far? Like, where are you going to take this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's actually very interesting this um, right now, as we have these sort of two ways of going. We have Lost in Time that we're selling as a format. Um, mm -hmm. We've developed it in collaboration with Fremantle Media. So mm -hmm. they're the creators of Idol and um, the X Factor and these like big shows that get mm -hmm. franchised mm -hmm. um, across the world. So we are talking now to mm -hmm. several interested territories about making it in their own in their own countries. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have Frontier, mm -hmm. this graphical uh, rendering platform, which we sell as a third party, which allows others to do what we did with Street Fighter or with anyone else, so and to do the virtual studio. So that's also sold as a separate mm -hmm. product. So yeah, it's interesting now. It we're in it very it the very end of very mm -hmm. interesting talks, but I, of course, cannot say <laughs> anything about it, anything. Uh -huh, yeah. And uh, so um, w w what what's the, the early learnings about mixed reality, and then what advice do you have for people who are doing mixed reality projects? Mm -hmm. It's hard to say um, mm. advice, um, but try it because mm. it's fun. Mm. Um, mm. I think that's why most of us at, at the Future Group are doing it because mm. we're all, we all came together as experienced professionals from our different fields and we came together to do something that nobody had ever done before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, yeah, I'm very glad I've been mm -hmm. part of that ride because it mm -hmm. it really broadens your mind. It broadens your toolbox. It it broadens your way for for storytelling and yeah. for for creating immersive experiences. Uh, yeah. And obviously, it lets you sometimes ride in a motion platform. So mm -hmm. it's not all bad. I'd like to see this uh, go in this direction of uh, I don't know, just uh, some return of physicality two games, yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, and uh, and so like if uh, if you're having an esport now, you know the the kid who spends the most time uh, sitting behind a computer playing League of Legends for years is the star athlete, right? And yeah. he can he can beat everybody else, um, but uh, if if you're filming things with a green screen um, and you capture say their motion, um, uh, you could have people competing competing in a sport uh, and translate that for the audience into like a virtual world or a virtual performance. Um, but, th uh, but they would be succeeding because they're back to being the best physical uh, performer. Yes. Guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, if you, if you have a Madden football match or something, you could actually say, get a bunch of people playing the, the Madden game, I guess, uh, you know, on a green screen and then 
translate their movements into into the controls for the game, right? Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. I mean, is that something you guys would think about doing, or we what, are what already what thinking about it? That's part of our uh -huh. part of one of our verticals that we want to get into. Um, mm -hmm. And in terms of the esports element, it's it's it will also enhance the experience, not just like in the video, but also you could you talk, mentioned League of Legends, you could also put a reporter mm -hmm. into sort of the battlefield and have mm -hmm. him as a real live war reporter mm -hmm. uh, walking inside um, the battle scene. So that's why it's cool to not just use augmented reality, but also mm -hmm. virtual. Um, mm -hmm. And the fact that we, I mean, it is also, you could also use it with VR goggles, mm -hmm. but when it's televised, broadcast like this, we, you want to see people's eyes, you want to see their reactions, and you don't want to take that away with mm -hmm. with watching someone with goggles, but that's that. Th those are other possibilities that you yeah. could also create VR experiences. So yeah, everything comes back to building the matrix, right? To exactly. <laughs> so uh, does anybody have any questions for Ellen here? Uh, and we have one in the very front row. Just talk about the interaction that uh, viewers have with that uh, contentist, con contest. Well, I don't know how to say that. Contestant, anymore. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. How immediate is that interaction? Meaning that is there any kind of delay on the live transmission for that rendering uh, these spectacular things that we can see there? Um, so the contestant doesn't cannot feel that the person at home uh, is playing, but but you're allowed to play. We open a window where you can play the challenge, the same 90 second challenge um, as the contestant is doing. But we didn't want it to restrict it to be exactly at the same time because we wanted people who wanted to watch it first and then play it. So it's, it opens at the same time. And then there's a window of a few minutes where you can play it. So you, but your score will either way be compared to that of the contestant. So if you get a higher score than the contestant, you will get bonus points. Mm -hmm. um, do you have kids that participate currently? Not for this show, but that's obviously a possibility. No. Mm -hmm. Next question? Uh, up there, I see it. Um, <coughs> pardon me. Yesterday we had some um, uh, people presenting things about esports, and their point was that when they tried to work with TV, um, they, they were not too keen. They thought it was um, going against against the flow a bit. So, mm -hmm. don't you feel Mike, that Mike working so towards yeah. TV, mm -hmm. uh, you're going against the flow and and fighting sort of like the natural progress of things? Not necessarily. When, when, for example, the Street Fighter example, then it's already being broadcast. So we're just enhancing that broadcast experience. And I think our technology, um, because it's broadcast ready, uh, it doesn't feel like it's going against the flow. It feels quite natural and it's giving something more into it. And I mean, it doesn't have to be on television. It can easily be done on Twitch or YouTube, or it can be live streamed as well. So it's not sort of confined to a classical linear TV experience. No. Mm -hmm. Another question? So uh, I guess, w you know, one of question I have is like, you know, what sort of um, resource do you guys now need to really fully execute this? Like, do you, do you need a uh, hundred more employees, or <laughs> what? What are you expecting as far as like you know, just what it takes to pull off a uh, like a global show of, of some kind? Right? Well, the yeah. studio is ready, and for to to execute um, another season of Lost in Time, mm -hmm. we we are ready. Uh, but I mean, if it depends how many territories sign up when they want to, you mm. know, ship it, what kind of features they would like to add in the app, uh, because the app is obviously 
geo-blocked. So mm -hmm. every territory will be able to have their own modification. Some territories will want in-app purchases, some will not. Mm -hmm. uh, but 100 new employees would be wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> we're, we're definitely looking for Unreal developers uh, and, uh, and game designers. Mm -hmm. So definitely, if, if anyone's looking for a job. So would you o also open a studio up in, in each new territory? No, for, for now, we, yeah. are, we will be for the, first, for the first season of each territory, we would have them fly to Norway with the mm -hmm. contestants and the host mm -hmm. because we are what we call IMR ready. So mm -hmm. the studio is set up with all the cameras mm -hmm. and, and it's easier, but then later you can have hubs. You could have a North American hub. We could set up a Middle Eastern hub or an Asian hub so you could so that more territories could sort of gather in one in one place with one huge green screen mm -hmm. arena that's set up with the right technology. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hola, hola. Yeah. How about here? I, 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 as if I understand right, um, we're talking about different layers uh, of, of interaction in places. So you have the, the contestants that are um, playing the game on the studio, and then you have uh, through different apps and games uh, the, the, the audience participating. Uh, that's why you call it interactive mixed, uh, mixed reality. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if you um, did already or you're, you're planning to um, integrate those two audiences uh, or, or treating the audience that is um, playing from, from outside, from the, from, from the internet, to become um, as a contestant, like uh, like uh, mm -hmm. using the apps to to make them uh, to train them to be a contestant uh, uh, in the game. Yeah, no, definitely. And so we did not do any of that for the first iteration, uh, but it's definitely a plan. And we also want to for the driving game that you can have, like in Mario Kart, for example, that you see the contestant as a ghost on your screen, so you have that intermediate um, connection. And we also want to do uh, for the live the live shows that you can do more than votes on your contestant like you do today for game shows. You, you just you know, send an SMS or you tap something to vote. But if, but if you can truly be interactive, maybe you can try to hinder a contestant that you don't want to win or you can, if mm -hmm. you're the one you want to win has to cross a river, maybe you can you know, try to put a little, build a little bridge so that they can get across and you can all do all these elements the second that it's all live and you can and you can be interactive. So those are the things that I guess I'm most excited about that you can truly help or hinder the contestants in the studio. So hopefully hopefully in a couple of years I'll be I'll be here talking about that. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, any last questions? Uh, okay. I think that's all. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you.